Jack is about to pull and analyze some data for us. Jack, what you looking at? Uh, we're looking at my uh, my last junior three race at Tri County Raceway. Was that the pro or the warm up race? Uh, the warm up. We didn't make it to the pro, did we? Let's see. All right. So the entire day we were experiencing a problem with. It seemed like the car would always uh, have this loose sensation. But upon uh, further inspection, we found that it, the car was pushing. Um, okay. See right here that it, when, when, anytime on this lateral G chase, you have it where. What, tell, tell me what part of the racetrack we're at. Like, okay. explain to me where we're at on the racetrack. All right, so this is the um, first part of front stretch right here. Okay. Turns one and two, back stretch, then turns three and four right here, and then uh, the other side of the front stretch. Okay. And uh, in, in the lateral G chase, if you have, um, when it comes down, it unloads right this, but it doesn't come completely all the way back down. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, then that that's a sign of a push. And it's two, a sign because of it's a sign of what now? A push. Okay. And then if we um, zoom in here. So this is this is just turns one and two. You zoomed in. Yep. Okay. All right, and then if we look at the um, min, the minimum and uh, the maximum of the speed trace with the lateral G trace, you can see that it's very close. Like, I mean, that that it's under 10 feet, which is another sign of pushing. When it's very close together, then you'll generally have a push. So, so what does it mean when the when the minimum speed and the maximum lateral G are close together? What is the good car doing? It's having to pull what out? Right, it's having to pull speed out for it to, to turn. To turn? Yep, I got you. Okay. Um, And then it's the exact same. It's under 10 feet and turns 3 and 4 as well. Let's okay. Back out. Okay, and then... um. So, so the bottom graph there is the, the lateral G trace? Yes, it's the lateral G trace. And that's right. showing where the good car is loading the right sides? Right, yeah. And when we, when we looked at the video from the smarting cam, you could see that when I come into the turn, I'm having to uh, physically put more steering input into the cart mm -hmm. to get the cart to turn, and then and then it breaks loose. So we had said that now it's not a loose problem; it's a pushing problem. And uh, and then when we what's were, what's causing the push? Yeah, that's that was my next point. We were okay. coming. Uh, well, when we got back home and we looked more into the uh, data, and uh, and thought about it, we. Came, uh, come across, came across the discovery that the left rear was completely overriding everything and not allowing uh, weight to transfer over to the right front for the right front to grip and turn. I got you. I got you. So show me, show me turns three and four while we got you up here. And you say we're having the same problem? Yeah. So, so show me turn entry. Does the go kart load and then unload? Yeah, so when we come in here, it it loads and then unloads and then loads again, unloads and then doesn't completely come all the way back down, which is a sign of a push, and then unloads, loads, unloads. I got you. So basically, times. when when that happens, what you're saying is it's sitting on the left rear when that right, happens? Yeah. I got you. And uh, and this again is under ten feet, so so that confirms that it was pushing. Okay. All right, so so what was your best line around the racetrack in the race? These are my three best laps. Right, let's look at turns one and two first. All right, so this this is your three fastest laps of the race. Yes. Okay. Three fastest laps. So this is a look at the entry, and the green is is my fastest lap. 
Uh, the yellow is the second fastest, and then the red is the um, third fastest. And we take a look over here, we can see that the yellow above everything is coming in at a much greater speed than green and red, and at the peak right here. Um, it, was uh, it gets, I mean, it's almost about a mile an hour faster than okay. the green. And, uh, and and for the L, we, you were lower, you were lower coming to the turn, but... Um, is that typical? Yeah, when, when you're coming into the turn lower, you're going to have a straighter shot into the turn, so then you should um, carry more speed into the turn, so that that's not a surprise. Um, okay. So if, if we were to go back on the track and change our line, it would be somewhere in between these two, because not, not too high all the way up here but not too low down here because when we take a look at the exit part of the turn back over here, uh, you can see that the yellow just completely drops off and you can't hold its speed and the green comes back. So we're saying is the green is, is was a little too, too high and right. the yellow was a little, a little, too, little too low. low. So you yeah, kind of so be, then, in the, be in the middle. I got you. Well, what would cause speed to drop off like that? Uh, because when, when it gets to the apex of the turn, the car is having to turn. You're having to pitch it much harder, which is causing it to lose lose its speed. And uh, and yeah, the yellow, like, look how high it, it comes right here. That's the middle of the part of the turn. Right, yeah, and it, it takes its apex way earlier, like down here. Whereas the green one takes it, you know, some around here. And it kind of rides up. Lower, yeah. That I can one, see that. That was a much uh, better line. So, and then let's take a look at three and four. All right, in three and four, you can see that um, that the green again was coming in much faster. Um, yeah, really, almost about. I don't know, half half a mile an hour. Okay. And uh, and then the yellow really that that was almost two miles an hour off of what the green was, so that was a really big difference. So the green was the best, and the green is the best. Yeah, and that one's in the middle. Right, this is in the middle. Almost like it was in one and two, right? Right, yeah. And this comes in much quicker, but then it drops, and then comes back, and then just completely just loses it and drops again. Right, so, so yeah. So this 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 was a pretty good line coming in entry. Mm -hmm. So not not too high like the yellow is, but not too low like the uh, red is. Then. Look, and then right as it starts to drop off right here. Mm -hmm. That's when that's when the driver cut down to the bottom of the track. Right, I got you. Instead of cut it a little too low? Yeah. Right. And just um kept it there. Okay, so with all this being said, okay, what would be what do you think would have made the go-kart better? Should we have done a tire change? Would that would have helped the push problem? Uh, yeah, so in the first race, we were actually on our slower tire. Okay. And uh, it was a uh, softer tire. Well, uh, it was a fresher tire. And uh, and that would cause it the left rear to have too much of a bite. And then and we were saving our uh, older tires for the next race, but we never got to race that race. <laughs> yeah, but we never made it there, huh? Um. So, so I think, I'm not really sure if, we might have still had that problem. Right. But I, it definitely wouldn't have been as worse. Yeah. It would have been better. Yeah. Good deal. Thanks, Jack. Smile. See you,